Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peter Bikes Books. Alright, today I'm going to do a review of a book. I almost didn't do the review of this book because I was like, okay, probably nobody's going to read this book. I don't know why I'm doing this review. It took me like six months to read. <laughs> this book is um, 119 pages. It took me like six months to read. But I finally sat down the other night on the front porch and I read the last 30 pages. I was like, you are finishing this book. You're getting this stupid book done, okay? And that book is The Day the Sea Rolled Back by Mickey Spillane. It has a beautiful color cover. I really like it. It's like this sunken sea ship. And underneath it, if you see, okay, it has this, like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's like this gold, like they have this like big huge chest and gold is like pouring out of it and there's like this sunken ship and underneath here and all this kind of stuff and it says in the front of it two kids sunken treasure and desperate men a formula for murder <laughs> america's number one mystery writer mickey splain <clears throat> diamonds emeralds silver gold more than enough treasure for a lifetime if you get to it first larry and josh knew where millions of dollars worth of treasure is hidden in the tropical waters surrounding pola island but there doesn't seem to be an easy way to get at it. Then something extraordinary happens. <laughs> what could that possibly be? On an otherwise uneventful day, the sea goes out just as it usually does, except this time it stays out. And suddenly, with the ocean floor exposed for everyone to see, the race for the treasure is on. Larry and Josh aren't the only ones looking amidst the sunk sunken ships and pirate skeletons. The entire island population is out to get what they can, including two brothers who will stop at nothing, including murder. Including murdering two, like, eight-year-old kids. Okay. And then at the end, it says, if you go back here, it says, about the author, Mickey Splane is the nation's number one mystery story writer. Writer. His Mike Hammer, which was a TV series too, his Mike Hammer mysteries have been instant successes since his first pub, or since he first published them in 1947. The Day the Sea Rolled Back, his first novel for young people, is packed. I mean, packed like a can of sardines. Packed with adventure, suspense, and surprises. <laughs> Not really. A junior library guild selection. This book shows Mickey Spillane's marvelous ability to hold readers at any age spellbound. Who wins these contests? Like, seriously? A library guild selection. This book sucked. Okay? It totally sucked. I thought it was going to be like the Goonies, you know? Like, when they finally, like, they go in there and they oh my god, all the gold, all that kind of stuff. So, let me tell you the backstory on why I'm reading this book. When I was a little kid... My dad and I would go out of town a lot on weekends. We would go to Michigan because my dad kept a boat in the summer in Saugatuck, Michigan. So we would go up there and sail every weekend. Or we would go to Chicago because my dad had done his medical residency at Northwestern. So we would go up there a lot. We'd stay for the weekend in Chicago. We'd visit friends in other cities, things like that. So anyway, I... Tucker, no. <laughs> Tucker's like, that book sucked. <laughs> so anyway... Um, one time I got this book. I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, hidden treasure. We're going on a boat. I can't wait, right? And I'm like imagining in my head. I like lived totally in the world of imagination back as a kid, right? Like probably many of us, which is why we read books. Which by the way, I am loving the audio version of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Okay, so I got this book. Well, I have no idea what happened to this book, right? It's, I can't find it anywhere. I must have given it away to a friend or something, but I never finished it, right? I remember reading like part of it and then not finishing it. So somebody either sent this to me or I got it on thrift books because I was talking about it one night on my vlog and like a lot of times or often when I, you know, uh, we'll talk about a book in my vlog, people send me the books because you guys are awesome is why. So anyway, uh, I don't know if it was that or if I bought it. I can't remember. Oh, it says thrift books on here. So I guess I must have bought it. So anyway, I get this book and I'm so excited to read it. And I really thought like I would be able to, you know, like get through the book in like a day. Here, let's just read Gold Fever. It says on the front of it, Gold Fever, except it's finger. Okay, Josh reached down to his feet. He let his hands run across the objects that he had stumbled over, then drew back as if they were hot. Larry, come here. Larry's hands went under the water. Then he touched the smooth, cold, oblong objects, moved one, finally got it tilted enough to get his fingers under it, then came up slowly, the small object, a massive weight in his hands. They didn't have to be told what it was. Even after being underwater all those years, the yellow sheen was there. Nothing else that small could have weighed that much, and in Larry's hands was the wealth of a lifetime. With the same breath, the boy said, gold. Okay, and then you see on here, like, all this gold, right? So you think that they're going to come across all the sunken treasure, but let me tell you what it really is, okay? It's a bunch of BS. It's 115 pages out of 119 of these kids going out in the sand and being chased by these brothers that took their dads. Okay, so the story, the backstory is that uh, this one kid's dad, Larry's dad, I think, is real poor because 
he had like this treasure hunting ship, but then these two brothers from another island like took it down supposedly, but they don't know that for sure until the kids walk on that boat because the sea's gone and they find out that it really was them that took it down. How? I don't really understand. That part was kind of confusing. But anyway, and then they're like looking for all these different ships because their dad always knew that this one ship went down, but he couldn't ever find it. And of course they find it because there's no sea there anymore, right? But they go on the ship and then they can't find the treasure. And then finally, by the time they find the treasure, the water's coming back and these brothers are kind of coming to get them. So they don't get any treasure. Well, I'm going to ruin the book for you, okay? I'm sorry. This is a total spoiler thing. So, of course, they get through this whole thing. And I'm like, oh, it's a learning lesson that, you know, we just have to work hard. Is there some learning experience to this stupid book? Is that what this is about? I wanted riches. I wanted wealth. I wanted treasure. That's what I wanted. I wanted these kids to like surpass, surpass everybody else, right, by finding all this gold. No, they didn't find any gold. There's no chest in there. Don't talk about any treasure chest in the book. I was pissed. But what do they find? So, of course, they don't even talk about this in the book, right? He doesn't pick up anything. Like, they're not in the boat. And he goes, oh, I picked this rock up as a souvenir. Why out of all the things he saw on this boat, okay, from skeletons to eye patches to everything, the one thing he picks up as a souvenir is a rock. So they get back. They're on shore. Everything's safe. The two murderers, they get sunken or they get taken away by the sea. Everything's fine again and everything's fine, right? Dad comes back from Miami. He gets flown on a helicopter even though he doesn't have any money because it's an emergency. It's just not well written, okay? At, by Mickey Spillane. So anyway, then they get back to the island and they're all like, oh, we're just glad you're safe. We're just glad you're safe. And the water didn't get you. Nobody killed you. Oh, we're going to lie to safe too. And he takes out this stuff and he goes, his dad goes, what is that? And he goes, oh, it's just a souvenir that I took from a boat. Oh, it's just a rock. And then the dad looks at it and he's like, it's the world's biggest uncut diamond in the world. Oh, and the book ends a paragraph later. What? I mean, let me tell you, truly, one a, a paragraph later, okay? Um... Finally, words came to young Larry, and he said, For Pete's sake, Dad, what's the big joke? Vincent DeMar wiped his eyes and put Larry's rock, in quotations, in the middle of the table. He looked at each boy in turn, then winked with pleasure at Timothy, telling him to get rid I always kind of thought between him and this friend, okay, his friend Timothy, who is Josh's dad, there's something going on there. Okay. <laughs> he looked at, between the two dads, Okay. I'm saying. He looked at each boy in turn and winked with pleasure at Timothy, telling him to get ready to be real proud of his son. Larry said, that crazy rock of yours is one of the biggest uncut diamonds in the world. How would you know that? I mean, seriously, how would you know that? And then they all started to laugh. Get up! <laughs> Easily at first and harder and harder and kept it up until they, first, until they thought they would never stop. End. What? Crap. That book was such shit. I was like, what is going on here? First of all, okay, these two dads go on this trip, right, to Miami for the weekend. <laughs> and they leave the two sons together on this island where they don't have any money and they hardly can even eat, right? And they're just living there together for, like, the weekend. And they're just supposed to, like, be on their own. And their dad's like, be safe. Don't go off the island. Where are they going to go? They don't even have a boat, right? The book is stupid. I'm so mad. I'm like, this is what I waited 40 years to read. So, anyway... Look at the pictures. The pictures aren't even good. Mickey Spillane was real attractive, though, wasn't he? Anyway, I gave this three stars, and I was being real generous, because I thought somebody out there, there's only like 30 reviews on, on Goodreads. I thought somebody out there might want to read it, and I don't want to ruin all the magic. So, anyway, if you have read this book, which I seriously doubt, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I have continued to review every book that I've read in 2018. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.